60 seconds. In other words, undock now. <coughs> Shit. Tiberius, didn't you bring that once on a fleet with me before and I got it killed? Uh. You have great faith. Maybe. I have faith. In the SRB. Any questions about Doctrine, SRP, or Anchors, or Ammo is all in the MOTD, so just reload your MOTD if you need any of that answered. Be quite you happy don't. with me bringing the Onyx, and that's all cool, man. I don't mind losing it. I'm I'm happy for you to bring it. I just uh, thought it was funny, because you lost one before. It's the only, probably the most expensive thing I've ever lost on a fleet. <laughs> Basically what we'll do though is I'm going to stick near to you and if you say throw up a bubble I'll just chuck up a bubble. Sounds good. Alright, looks like we got, got most everyone here so we're going to start moving now. Go ahead and align VTAC 3 guys, align VTAC 3. Okay, uh, as I usually don't, I'm not going to fleet warp out of a pause in case people are still AFK, but warp yourself to V3 at zero. Warp to VTEC 3, warp to VTEC 3. Falcon pilot, can you X up in Ugly Ducklings, please? Is there a separate fleet for Intis? Okay, jump through, jump through, then jump through. If you guys are flying tackle, so if you're flying T1 frigates or interceptors, please uh, join my fleet. So the name is Dusty. Dusty Nibonal, yep. If you're in frigate, tackle, interceptor, and dusty knee bottles fleet. Okay, on the other side of line jump bridge, line jump bridge. Well done, guys. For Every time you come out of cloak, please put your hardeners on. That was perfect. Not one person dropped cloak before they should have done. Take the fleet warp. Warp drive active. On land as soon as you land. Uh, actually... Scratch that. Uh, Dusty, can you have your guys jump in first, please? Let me know what CXIC looks like. Uh, we're already burning. We're in uh, okay. F90. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. I'm just watching out for bombers because we've got some pipe bombing going on in the area. So. Yeah. You're good then. Go ahead and jump into ZXIC on land. Jump, jump, jump. Alright, once you're through, align F4R, align F4R on the other side. Take the fleet warp. Warp drive active. Ink Destiny and Fleet, please, just got here. Okay, and on land, you can jump into F4R. Jump F4R on land. 
Run away to four. I'll take the jump bridge from uh, V3. There's no jump in, jump in, jump in. And Grook Shanks, that's exactly why. Um, especially because AAA had bombers in system in GE TAC, and we lost two bill a couple days ago with a fleet trying to sit on the GE TAC gate. So I'd rather not lose our whole fleet before you get started. Jump through, jump through. Okay. okay. And align to WLAR on the other side. Align WLAR. Take the fleet warp. And jump in on land, jump, jump, jump. Okay, once in dead WLAR, aligned to the jump bridge, aligned to the jump bridge. What has become of us? No lemmings. I know, right? If we keep doing stuff like this, people are going to have to take us seriously, and that's going to be no take fun the fleet at all. We wouldn't be able to call ourselves newbies. I know, right? We must stop being shit. <laughs> no, we must stop being we shit. We must stop oh, being shit, yeah. Never not be shit. Actually, I'd rather go back to being shit. Oh, it took us months to find a Alliance logo. How long will it take us to may find a new name? <laughs> every, every, every few weeks, I go back to Rohadalon and just be shit. And I'll land, go ahead and jump through the bridge. And you can still keep being shit. Take the bridge. Bridges, no spur. What do we become? Some of us landed a little far out because we were a big groups. Burn yourself in, take the jump bridge. God damn, I love it when a big fleet comes through a jump bridge. And align to ATAC V, align to ATAC Victor. It's like you're being signed out. I will see that's Lincoln City. Amazon. Take the fleet warp. Warp drive active. Station is currently MTFC. No one around. No. Uh, could someone link? The um, FC have just literally joined you guys um, today, so. Well, welcome. Uh, Sven here will teach you how to set up a whisper key. Appreciate it if you use that just because we're coordinating a lot of things, but I'm super glad you're here. 
Jump in, thank duck. Jump in, jump in, jump in. Take yes. the gate. Take the gate. Could you uh, jump, jump. link that in Alliance chat for him? He's in uh, my phone. Thank you. Okay, once you get through traffic control, align to XF. Take the fleet warp. Take jump, 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 jump into X three. Once you get the tra traffic control aligned to the jump bridge in X three. Do you know what planet that is? My corp doesn't have it yet. You're right, B9 doesn't have it, that's terrible. Well, you're gonna get a fleet warp here. It's planet 6 moon 2. BNI has it. Oh yeah, you guys do. That's alright, we're all fleet warping, so... If you didn't catch the fleet warp, you'll be able to warp to us on land. Hold on this gate for just a second, don't jump through, hold, hold, hold. Oh, we got a limit. Okay, go ahead and jump through, jump, 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 take the bridge. That's pretty cool. Traffic control. How can this be? On the other side, align to 7MD. Align 7MD. See, you know, fucking science gets us here. It's like a fucking hot drop. Damn commies. Uh, two newts, I just passed through there, sorry. Take the warp, guys. Warp drive active. Jump, 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 jump through, jump through. Hey, Divine, where are you guys right now? It's five. It's five. It's so dusty. Spy? Hey. We're in ERBK. We're gonna do the one right on gate, guys. So go ahead and anchor up to me, and we're gonna approach this thing.
didn't probably even form up. They did not even come for the time. What's our default orbit? Prop mine's on, guys. Prop mine's on. What's our default orbit, I see? It's 500 ranker. If we're bashing the um, SPU, might as well. Prop mine's on. Anchor at 2500, 5000. Either one's fine. You can lock up the SBU once you're close enough. FC, is there anywhere in particular you want dictors? What was that? Is there anywhere in particular you want dictors? E there will be, but stay with the fleet right now. Tabby Reese, you're up my human. Sorry, man. Is your range your optimal plus your fall off? No. Your fall off is basically where your guns stop hitting. Your optimal inside of that is basically where you do the most damage. But is the optimal in addition to the fall off, or is the optimal yes. including to the fall off? It yes. includes the optimal together. No. See, it is included. Take, it is included. If it says fall off 28. Whisper keys, please. Thank you. So Alright guys, you, now that we're close enough, go ahead and unanchor and orbit the pause at your optimal, or orbit the SBU at your optimal. That way, if bombers do come in system, we're not all grouped up here. So go ahead and unanchor and orbit the SBU at your optimal. Make sure you're using bashing ammo here, don't use action, it's way too expensive to shoot at this thing. So, Again, you have your question, optimal? Again, if your optimal range is 14, that's the best damage, 14 or below. Yeah. And if your fall off range, for example, is 28, that means 28 uh, below 20. Uh, Farther than 28, you won't do normally damage yeah. at all. So, what you do is if, you... if your optimal is say 20, then that's like the point where you're doing the best damage. If your fall off is 28, um, eight kilometers beyond that, you do half damage, and then another eight kilometers beyond that, you do no damage. If you're it's looking at the description of the gun, though, it's the other way around. On the description of the gun, it says simply what the fall-off distance is, which you have to add to the optimal in that case. That's right. So, right now my gun has a fall-off to 28 and optimal 14, so I'll be shooting... Um, no, that's, that's looking at it fitted to your ship, though. If you just pull up the description for that part, you'll notice that the fall-off listed there is like 8, or 10, or whatever it is in that particular yeah. case. Just. Just take my answer. If you look at the gun, that is the right answer. If you look at a module, it might be a different thing, but no one looks at a module to find out this yeah. range. Yeah, your optimal is your best damage when you're looking at the actual gun when it's fitted. You're at your fall off, you're doing at your max fall off, less than that, you're doing 50% damage. But I've seen guns that have a less of a fall off than the optimal. Do you get a kill yeah, mode no, for taking out one of those? Not the target itself. Really Sorry, the module itself. Yes. Not when it's fitted yes. on a. You get a, a uh, kill mode for taking out an SBU. They're worth about 150 mil. So, um. Just I mean, look at your gun. 28 yeah. kilometers. Fall off means 28 kilometers the maximum you do. Any damage hit control 40. D, hit control D, then hover over your guns and you'll see the bubbles. Don't, yeah, or mouse over it or whatever. If I believe it's your optimal range plus fall off, you'll hit almost near 100% with both those added. It's after that where you uh, start to lose your. Uh... I mean, you can believe what you want, but it, or you you're can just free go look to believe everything. Or you can just look Hit at the like optimal. So if you call the fall off range, the range that you can shoot beyond Good soundboard. range, then you can hit up to your optimal plus two times your fall off range. 
What? No, just whatever the fall off is, is the fall off. There's nothing else to it. No, no it's where you guess no, 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 no. That's not the way it works. The way it works is you got optimal plus two times fall off is your maximum range. You are going to be two times fall off. Very, at two very times slowly. fall off. At, thank you, Doug. At two times fall off, you have a 0.6 or 6.5 percent chance of hitting at that range. Uh, past that. All the way to and, it, and from there it goes all the way down to infinity zero. So it never quite hits zero, but it gets really close when you get three times fall off. Your best range to shoot at is optimal. Anything up to optimal plus one times fall off, you get a plus fifty. Talk about a tank, chance. man! A full fleet of eagles and noahs. That is exactly right. Thank you, Dunk. But yeah, exactly. Your optimal is the best place for you to be fighting, unless you're talking about some other stupid guns that have special abilities. But the best rule of thumb is optimal. Always your optimal. Anything beyond that, you start losing ability to do damage. I don't so, want to bring up semantics, but optimal is optimal. So right at the optimal, you have 100% to hit if you don't take into account tracking and things like that. And that fall off. You do um, maximum damage, not taking into account tracking, yes. And then at fall off, that, um, well, it's 28, which is 14 more than the optimal, so that's you lose 50%, 50 percent chance. Cents for your damage. Yeah. Does that yeah. SBU remind no. anyone else of a uh, disco ball right now? <laughs> oh, crap, yes. I mean, the, the, the turret mechanics are hideously complex, and the missile yeah, counter. The, the missile mechanics are just as hideously complex. Gloriously complex. Yeah, yeah. If you've seen the formula for the chance to hit a moving object in space uh, in this game, it's it's a pretty interesting formula. Well, basically, night level with physics to understand it. Pretty much. But um, except except remember, we're playing submarines in space, so it's a little bit different than if it was real <laughs> in space. Submarines in space, I like it. But it's um. Just a good rule of thumb when you're starting out, not try to overanalyze it, is your optimal is your optimal. I don't like how it's displayed on the tool type of that. When no, it's on nobody the does. It makes no sense, but... <laughs> it's inconsistent between what it says on the module and the way it displays over your gun, where it already adds in the oh, fall off. Totally, totally That's also, inconsistent. Uh, doesn't it? And include your skills though on the tooltip. Yeah, but what oh, it like what it includes skills yes. on the it, but it, that's still when you go to info it still includes your things. Yeah, but yeah. um, it says like optimal fourteen and fall off twenty eight, but it should be optimal fourteen fall off fourteen. Yeah. No, that's incorrect. It should be optimal fourteen fall off uh, fifty six. No. Two times fall off is zero. Twice your fall off is your your least. Bit, uh, yeah, but the fall uh, off is a 50% range. So, yeah, but that's 28 kilometers, not 14. It, it depends yeah, but... on the race and the type, because, for example, um, blasters and blasters have virtually no rat fall off, um, whereas projectiles have quite a large fall off, and Signal the general rule of thumb is you always fight with projectile weapons in your fall off because generally the optimals are very short but the fall offs are very long but then you take into account lasers and they have really long optimals but really short fall offs so it it, it gets really complicated when you take into account races and types and all this right, right. But, but yeah but guys, what i'm saying is like the, the easiest, guns. The easiest way for me to do in my head is to um like say that the optimal is a hundred percent chance to hit it the fall off in addition to the optimal 50 percent chance and then another 50 percent or another fall off is basically zero percent chance no, and it's it makes not, it, damage no, it's not, not chance to hit no. it's damage guys here's here's the major question waffles or pancakes pancakes oh, oh. Blueberry Bacon pancakes. Toast. waffles Blueberry Golden pancakes. waffles pancakes. yeah but i think you're being prejudiced against crepes uh, all crepes? I, there we I go. Like crepes. Crepes, crepes, crepes are good. Crepes, crepes are awfully crepes. good. So we got yeah, waffles. Good time. But, we got but, a waffle but, see, to me, we got a, a crepe fashion. is just a pancake. 
Uh, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, a crepe oh, stuff. Oh, hold on, hold on. It's, it's a crepe becomes a pancake when you go beyond your crepe alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flapjack. I've actually, never heard it explained any better than that. <laughs> that is actually perfect. That's a perfect explanation between well the a crepe well and a waffle. And two fall offs past the crepe, you just get pancake batter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, I, um, know, I like it. It's good. I shit. What maple syrup though? Yeah. Oh, Make sure you like, recycle you your guns, it. guys, too. Make sure you reload and recycle. You know, recycle. It uh, might be because I'm a totally ignorant European, but when people were saying maple syrup, and I never made the connection between maple syrup and the maple tree until I saw a video of these guys piping the syrup from the trees. It's hey, Dusty, can you jump up here for a minute, please? Sure. Mind was literally blown. Yeah. Oh wait, they actually get this from a maple tree. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's syrup. Oh shit. It's it's syrup, dude. It it comes from I, a tree, dude. Yeah, yeah they I mean, literally yeah. stick a tap in a tree mm -hmm. with a pipe and suck it out. Yeah, it fucking flows out of the fucking tree, dude. Like my like in Minecraft with rubber. Yes, exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, maple syrup comes from a maple tree. <laughs> but but I. I was like, look at that, look at that, and I was going, no, 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 there must be some sort of berry or some shit like that, but no, it comes straight out no, of the sap. Yeah, the tree. they just, they literally hammer a fucking spigot into a tree, and uh, hello, sir. That's, yeah. No, it's like it, has to, it has to be at a certain time of the year, the, yeah. it has to be a certain temperature, there's all these other factors involved. But the Canadians just like are really good at that. Optimals, yeah? <laughs> yes, here's the deal, though. Did they you have guys optimal know? syrup time. Did you guys know that Canadians the Canadians... Because the uh, maple tree is plentiful here. The Canadians have, I shit you not, a strategic maple syrup reserve. I totally kind of like, understand kind of why. Like the U.S. gold reserve. <laughs> and it was robbed. It was actually robbed a couple of years ago. Let me find that. Oh, it's illegal oh. to bring it over the border, too. Is this a strat up channel? Yes. Yeah, but that's probably the same way as like most countries We're have a grain here. reserve. Doing the strat up. Um, if you want to join us, we're in seven MD, but you come so at your own risk. I made it. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. I can't believe fucking Provi have not formed up for this at all. I haven't seen. They I didn't see anyone honest. on the route up here. It was completely empty systems the whole way. Yeah, but that's probably what they were doing earlier when they came and got uh, bombed. They were probably attempting to fight there at GE, keep the fight there while they brought in a pa bashing crew. I mean, it makes sense. I would, it's a good idea. Keep the fight away from them. Yep. Does, does anybody have any spy ults in Provi? All right, there's a uh, Provi gang on the uh, SV5 gate. Um. On the head gate in SV5, I just got popped. There's a Loki, a bunch of uh, Tyrannuses, and they all got webs and a Dictor. So even if you're in an Interceptor, they will kill you. They get Insta-lockers. So I couldn't catch up to you guys. You got to come the back way. But, yeah, we yep. Around. Thanks for the info. You're good. Isn't so there do not try to go through head to where you guys are because you will okay. get killed. Is that Sino-friendly? Yes, everything on grid is friendly, guys. It's sign is not on grid. Everything in system is friendly, guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, in general, do not ask yeah. about Sinos when you're in fleet, guys, especially on strat ups like this. If it's not friendly, you'll hear about it. So the Zarkon's friendly? Also, Just good operational security tip. Are those Phoenixes friendly? Is that Plex Tanks Badger friendly? Isn't there a Twitch feed with this CVA Intel channel on it? I was watching it the other day. But I'm pretty sure there's a Twitch feed. Probably. You can just make a neutral all right. and then um, join it and mess with them easily. You get banned huh. pretty quickly, I've done that. Make a new neutral alt. It's boring. It takes 10 hours to buy them last, or whatever it is.
All those drones at the uh, TCU reminds me of the Matrix. Those scenes with the Sentinels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I was wondering what you. I would have been fine if they would have stopped it like the first movie, but no, they just had to keep going. If you turn yeah, past, for the guy who is asking, or anybody actually who's new and doesn't fully understand what we're doing, uh, we can just explain it really quick because I'm sure there are a few people that are new. So, sovereignty broccoli. Blockade units allow you to attack sob structures in a system if you have 50% plus one um, on each gate, depending on the number of gates. So if in 7MD there are only two gates because it's a pipe system, so they only really need to have they need to have both gates covered in order to do it, which they do. Um, but when those are dropped, you can attack the infrastructure hub, which we have in system. And we'd rather not lose the infrastructure hub because once that's gone, after two timers, you can lose the TCU, and if you lose the TCU, then you lose sovereignty. And losing Sov to Pravi is a really bad day for all of us. So, we're killing these to set the iHub back to invulnerable, and then, then we can wrap the iHub back up and we'll have the system secure, at least for a day. If you turn the t um, brackets off on the drones, you can barely see them. But if you turn the, all the brackets off and zoom out, um, all the gun flashes makes it look pretty cool. We need more laser fleets, so they, they're much better. Yeah, but it's better they than the more colors. Time. More colors. We can. I mean, those napalms are rocking rainbow crystals. Yeah, they were I was heroes. about to say that when we were out in that fleet the other night, those apox just had a rainbow. It was like. Yeah, people didn't have the rights of crystals in. <laughs> but God bless them. They put a show. Mm. I'm the the um op before that. Um, when we dropped our carriers on them, there was a moment where all you had was like the brave Archon fleet and these nave the Apox flying next to each other and it was quite literally the most amazing thing I'd seen in EVE in my three years of playing. <laughs> it was beautiful. Without sounding like a spy, how do you get involved with co uh, ca Capital Ops? You send the mail to Lorif and he sends you a form, then you send them all your API keys for every character you have. Um, you then need to upgrade all your API keys on the Brave Core services to full ones, not just like partial ones. Um, and then they decide whether or not you'll get accepted to it or not. What's his name? Oh. Loriath. Um, you link it in fleet or something? Yeah, I'm just gonna find it for you. Is there a cap SRP or does that just not exist? <laughs> not really, no. Um, the idea is, is basically anybody who flies capital ships at the moment really can afford to do so and the focus of the alliance is that, you know, we want to promote new bros and we want to promote eagle fleets and bow fleets and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, and, and considering when you take into the fact that when you insure a carrier or a dreadnought, you get most of its value back anyway, it's... And you can afford to buy one in the first place, it's not a massive loss. We uh, we subsidize fuel and Strawn, and that's about it. Yep. Um, most of the characters, are they like alts or are those mains? Well, for, it depends on some each both. person. Yeah, some are both. Like, for me, my main flies dreads and my alt flies carriers, so... It's for me, it's my main flies both, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, send that through, get your API keys in, um, they'll all get checked out. If it's all good, you'll get an email, uh, email inviting you to the, the channels and the mailing lists and all that good stuff. What um, are the... Hmm? What are the minimum, like, um, what do you need to be a carrier you pilot? You need to have a carrier and you need to have at least mastery level 2 in a carrier. The hell's mastery. 
where when you write find the information or when you get the information screen up on this ship you go to the mastery tab and you get the mastery levels basically if you're at mastery level one of any ship you can just about barely fly it if you get mastery level two yeah you're getting there three you're reasonably proficient four you're proficient and five is if you're a complete masochist and just want to spend ages and ages and ages training for skills you might not ever need. Wait, you don't even need triage to do it? Mastery level four will give you triage, but there is a doctrine, there, there are two doctrines. There's a triage doctrine and a slow cat doctrine. The slow cat doctrine, which has been proven and tested by a lot of um, Mulsec alliances, does not require you to have triage. Um, are those like OPSEC or can you link me then? You, you get those once you join in. The mastery join levels the have a lot of things that aren't really necessary in my opinion. Yeah, once yeah, you're yeah. past mastery, you'll once have you're past anyway mastery your three, um, they're useful skills, but not all of them are like necessary. Necessary, yeah. For I'll, I'll agree with that. that. Also, do we need jump drive calibration five? Yes. Yes. It sucks, don't you need yes. jump drive operation I, I, five to fly a carrier? Yes. Well, yes. no, you don't. Oh, do you? Yes, you do. But you need jump drive calib uh, jump drive operation five to get jump drive calibration, and you need to have jump drive calibration level five. If you don't have jump drive calibration level five, seriously, um, especially in the capital drive. ships are so pegged with it. It makes such a huge difference. Like for example. Mm. I've got jump drive calibration 5 on my carrier. I can jump from low sec, 7 jumps from a mar, right into the heart of catch in one jump. Yeah. Whereas a guy with level 4 can't. But, or a carrier, isn't it less important as they can jump further than dreads are already? Exactly. So if it's if you can do that sort of thing with a carrier, a, a dread has a similar jump range as a jump freighter and um, with jump cow five, um, I still need two jumps to get into catch. But I mean, for a carrier, um... wait, where do you go from seven jumps to Mar to where? It's like um, seven jumps to Mar low sec, mm -hmm. and you jump in, and I can jump pretty much with a carrier anywhere in catch almost, but. With a jump freighter, I I do still need a midpoint. Yeah, well, you there's a, you can jump from WJ dash, which is a no fucks home system, all the way to Uplinger, which is three jumps from Rens. Yeah, it's awesome. So that's G8 to WJ to Uplinger, you know, three jumps, and you you're a very good trade hub. Get anything you want. Remember to cycle guns, guys. I mean, but it, brilliant. is, is think... a carrier with um, jump drive four uh, have the same range as a red with jump drive five? Mm, yeah, it does kind of. I mean, the carrier has a very, very large jump jump range. Dreads but if you're flying cool. dreads, you have to have five. There is absolutely no question about it. But at the same time, having five, like there was not a few days ago where a few guys had jump drive calibration four and they needed the midpoint where the guys that had jump drive calibration five didn't they could just jump straight to where the fire was going to happen and if you're in a carrier and you need to go for a midpoint particularly if it's like a hostile system you're basically sat in space waiting for your cap to recharge and that is bad news that is seriously bad yeah. news unless your midpoint's a station system Although, yeah, a friendly even then, the station system. Yeah, it, it is quite funny because you can be just traveling around. I mean, I've been in um, places like Amamaki and so on, seeing PL Super landing in belt top belt. And yeah, the Super can't dock anyway, they, and they have yeah, to. Yeah, but it's hilarious. <laughs> you always see PL like hot drop up twenty super carriers into a Maki top belt and sit there and wait to jump out. To be fair, if I had a uh, if I was in PL with a super and I wouldn't care about jumping my super into top belt. No. Because I'd know if 
anything got tackled, I'd probably have about 10 or 20 carrier, uh, other capital ships landing to help me. Still, it's funny to see. Uh, I mean, there was one time I saw a Nick, um, a Goon Swarm Nix land in one of the Amar low sex systems I was in. And we landed, and we're like, oh, it's a Nix, tackle it, tackle it. And it got away just in time because we were like, what's that Sino doing in space? So I blacked the 40 million isk covert op ship that <laughs> had lit the Sino. Yeah. But once I get um, a carrier or with um, jump drive, calibration 4, and mastery 2, I can fly with Brave? Yes. Because you will yes. have a majority of, the, majority of the base skills to do things all right. Yeah, but I I would train much further than the Mastery Two. Like, it Mastery Two only has Fighters Two, and um. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I would get that to at least like three or four. Master, quickly. there's a camp training plan out there for Eidma because yeah. you can sit in a carrier and not have any of the actual skills that you need to fly it effectively. Yeah, I'm using a skill plan from there's like this website that gives a um. You can like select um Oh for Master, uh, it's, there's there actually is a brave literally, there's a brave cap skill plan. Oh, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know where to find it? It, it was LinkedIn Fleet. It's somewhere, yes, yes. Mm. I mean this, this is the thing about caps. I mean oh hello. Oh. There's a claw. It's on the gate. The, the interceptors are taken care of. Um, hey Dusty. Yeah. Can you jump back up one minute? Yep. Wow, it's nearly a year of training just to get to the basics. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, yes. I mean, you don't want to go anywhere near a cap unless you have at least um, mastery level one in it because you can't do anything without mastery level one. There, there is one timer, so there is one exception. One Which exception. One if you want to use your cap for what is normally the second most important use of a cap in the game, as a as a space suitcase, then if you yeah. can, if you yeah. can sit in it and you can jump in it, go with God, son, because now you are you you go wherever but, you want to go. Then I'll counter that and say, really, what you should be using for that purpose is a character that trained to jump freight at first. But jump freighters are much more expensive. Jump freighters cost six they and a half billion is they tank less, they take more training to get into, and they can't fly. No, they don't ships. take more training to get into. They, they don't, they, they take far less, but Okay. Um, regardless of that full bar, all the other points stand and carriers can fly fitted ships, which is what you're gonna have ninety nine yeah. percent of the time. Yeah, I'll agree with that, because once you get into a carrier um, quite literally, the entire game of EVE changes because you can literally pack your favourite ships into your carrier and go wherever you like at a drop yeah. of a hat. You can just go, I'm flying my signer there, load all my stuff into the carrier, off I go. It just so, it literally changes the game. If you want to just train a carrier to do nothing else than be your own fucking personal space suitcase and you want to pay a billion is to be able to do that because really, you can buy a carrier, slap the shittiest. Yeah, the skill books. Those are expensive. Yeah, the skill books five hundred mil, but the skill books are yeah. E e the fitting for a fucking like a suitcase carrier is nothing. It's yeah, it's just, it's just and, cap, cap me charges, a DCU. And then if you sign in right and don't screw that up, you're not gonna die. Stop the cheese or you're running away from fleet. Can you tell them to come back? Poor man, Stone Freighter. Thanks. Yeah. Oracle's good. 160,000 meters cubed anywhere in catch. Yeah, I mean, but for me, when I fly around, I fly around all over catch with my carrier. I have my ratting battleship, my Noctis, and a couple of interceptors for flying around in. And I find the system where I go ratting, I drop my carrier, I go ratting, and that's it. It even makes ratting easy. You can sit outside a pot and just drop five fighters for your battleship. But oh god, yeah, that's glorious. Un until you but AFK rat like yesterday, and you need a response fleet to save you. How much yeah. of a risk card drive by? How much yeah. of a risk card drive by James Days uh, when you're doing that? Well, if if you're paying attention, it's not very likely. Said every ratty carrier that got ganked ever. 
Well, it depends if you're sitting hey, at like a, a pause or if you're. Complacency is um... a bitch. Yeah. I got a question about What's the question? carrier. So I got two accounts and I'm working on one to fly a carrier in like six months. Can he sit off in a space? Be sure you cycle your guns, guys. Keep shooting. Or yeah. almost down here. What? Say that again. You got. Um... Sorry, say that again. Can can I have a? If I have two counts going, can I have my carrier pilot sit off in a safe somewhere in the same system and assign ten yes. fighters to my yes. Ishker that's but, threatened with well, um, ogres? No, you yes. can't. First of all, you can only assign five to you, um, any ship because it counts as one of their drones. And second of all, um, you'd want to have it sitting at a pause. Preferably, yes. the best way to do that is have it offline near the tower. And then if you see anything come in, just um, click to online the tower and you'll be safe. The other way of doing that, because what, what you can do, because carriers get bonuses to um, command processors, so you can get into a fleet, you can assign yourself some fighters, and you can give yourself some boosts to do ratting with. What you can, but what you have to do is obviously set it up in a pause. Um, now, of course, you can't provide links if your carrier is sitting in the pause, what you do is you get it orbiting so it's ever so slightly out of the force field. If no. anybody come, Yeah. That yeah. is an no, That's per proved disastrous for W Rush. He did that and lost his carrier doing exactly what you're describing. Really? I have never lost a carrier doing that. Never. There's a guy that got oh, um, grabbed by Titan in Bavril. Hold on, hold on. That. If you What's up, Lincoln? have. Sitting next to an anchor tower and onlining at the moment, you get attacked as a much safer method. Yes. Is he? Plus, well, if you well, sit, yeah. someone asking for me? If uh, no, this to me. If okay. You sit in the box, yep. Pull your head out just a bit. That's actually an exploit, and they classified it as an exploit, which is why now you sit on the tower without the shields on. Okay. I didn't realize they classed it an exploit because what, the, what, what they used either, to do but... when when I was out in low sec, what we used to do is we used to have the carrier orbiting the pause um, with a prop mod on, like a micro warp drive, and we'd increase the orbit distance a meter at a time until we could actually like launch fighters and assign them. Um, but if anybody came in and like, and it was orbiting, it wasn't like sat still or anything like that, it was orbiting. And if anybody came in and like pointed it, um, it would turn off the micro warp drive and because the, naturally, when you're orbiting something, you go a little bit further out from your orbit distance that you set. Um, it would drop back within the shields. That's what we used to do in low sec. That's a great idea. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The actual, I'll, I'll link it, but the actual exploit is assigning drones to another pilot and then moving back with the end of the force. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, that, that is the exploit. You can that's... use you can use armor maintenance pots, repair a pos gun. Right, and then enter the shield and go to sleep, and you wake up in those pots and repair that one pos gun next morning. Pretty much. Yeah. I don't know if that's an exploit, but you can still do that. Do you know how how many meters you have to be? It depends on the size of the pos. It depends on the size of the pos, you can, and you, it depends you actually... on skills as well, because sometimes the prop mod is like, it varies on speed depending on the skills. So, it's just trial and error. That's a great idea, though. It I'm pretty sure on... as well, you can add uh, a force field to your overview, so you can actually see exactly how far away where you are. You can. It's true, but however, setting it at 500, because no, yeah, that's you can set you it can down do to it 50 to meters. It. Yeah, true, but it, 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 it doesn't necessarily, it's not like the bleeding edge limit. No. Like, of but... one meter, sort of thing. Yeah, but uh, the way I see it is that you move your carrier to 50 meters or less, and then you'd set it off, doing whatever, yeah, and you ran yeah, yeah. it with local open. As soon as anyone came in, alt tab. Alright guys, as soon as this thing pops, we're gonna hold here for just a second, be sure you recall your drones. Yeah, I, I see exactly what you're talking about. Um, if anybody enters local, you just tab over and turn off your prop mod, and you drop back within the shields. <laughs> Noisy. <laughs> that 
totally freaked out my cat. Glitched in OP. There's a hack in there somewhere. Alright, hang on for just a second, guys. We got one more thing to shoot, but we gotta hold for just a second. The final blow. Wow. Go ahead, lock up. Lock up that anchoring SBU and fire one volley at it. Uh, it's broadcasted if you don't have it. Done. Just shoot once. Okay, good. Everybody degress, degress, degress. If you still have drones out, pull your drones. Stare off. Oh. I should have been on that gate. Alright guys, go ahead and align to t -Tech r Align t -Tech r gate. t -Tech r two newts in system. Okay, align t -Tech r The Brave plan is basically what I was training. I just hadn't defined it in a different place. Eve University? Nope. No, it was it was this website where um, it has pre-made Eve Mon plans for ships online that I don't remember. Nice. If you dropped Chorus Gander Pro. Take the Fleet Warp, take the Fleet Warp. You shoot the anchor one because of a long-standing bug with sob mechanics and anchoring SPUs. Wait, what? Guys, lock up that wreck. Lock up that wreck. And pop it. Good job. Just hold here. You can thank these guys for saving us the trouble of bashing a second one. Oh guys, is the bash finished? Okay, lock up the other SBU guys, the next anchoring SBU, ping it once, shoot it once. Guys, don't shoot their depots. Yeah, do not shoot a mobile depot, don't shoot any mobile depots. I'm sorry, I shot it twice. Okay, good job. Degress, degress, degress. Just put drones on. Does anyone use the... Okay. Form up, guys. Go ahead and approach the jump bridge. Approach the gate. Approach the gate. Sorry, not the jump bridge. The gate. Approach T-Tech-R. Approach T-Tech-R. Does anyone use the, um... We're actually gonna ping off of a perch here just because we're a little ways off of it. Take the fleet warp, it's warping down to perch, and we'll move back up. How do you pronounce Nuglufar? Naglufar? Swaglufar? Naglufar. Naglufar. It's the coolest looking dread. Vertical. How did they dock that thing in the station? It looks so much like the Yamada ship from home. Go ahead and align. People who are down with me, align T-Tech-R, align T-Tech-R. 
Guys who are on the gate, do not jump through, please. We need to wait until this anchors before we're actually going to leave system. Take the fleet warp. Gate is red. Gate is red. Don't jump through. We need to wait two minutes for this thing to online. Or to anchor, and then we'll be good. Why does the Anaglifar have two slots but a 50% bonus, unlike all the other dreads? So it gets the exact same damage output as three guns? I know, but like, is it to save ammo? No, just make it special. Just a game mechanic they came up with to, for that particular ship, that's all. Well, it used to have two guns and two turret slots, so they decided to make it exclusively a turret platform, and rather than yeah, changing the a... slot layout, they gave it a bonus like that. It's a compensation for the loss of the missile slots. Uh, without having to fix the thing, having only two... Sorry. My... Minute 40, guys. If you need to grab a drink or something, you have a minute and 30 seconds to do so. Hey, I got another quick question about uh, carriers and assigning drones. What? So you can assign only five per ship. Does that mean if you assign five to a ship, that ship can't have any of its own drones out as well, or not? That's correct. Yeah, that's yeah. It for all purposes, it functions as one of its own drones. But the skills oh, okay. of the pilot are not taken into account. Yeah, you can only of, assign uh, as many drones to a person as they have skills to use and they act and function in exactly the same way as their regular drones will do. But the other thing about um, fighters is they can follow them when they go through warp, which is most of the time a bad thing because if they warp to enemy pos, they basically die. The carrier oh, pick Thanks, guys. Does the carrier pick up uh, aggro when he assigns fighters to another person and he fights with them? Yes. Yes. But um, hey, Riverend, you're uh, 90 kilometers off. You're probably going to bounce up and then come back down to us. Well, um, we're about to jump through here. I was doing it in 30 seconds. I had a carrier to pause, and you could assign it to someone at the station, and you can engage the station, and your ship doesn't gain any aggro. Only the carrier. Um, no, I don't think that's true, because you got... Alright, go ahead and jump to car Jump, 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 jump to car you got to tell that um, those fighter drones to go after a particular target. On the other side, a line to detect G, a line detect G. It doesn't matter if you get out of um, the carrier has... You're breaking up, I can't hear you. Only the carrier gets the girl. That's... Well, the... the... I think he said only thing right, about the carrier and her. only took the aggro and not him. But I've not known that to be the case when I've done it. Take the fleet work. I've done that and it's that's the case for me at least. If that is, it's a bug and that shouldn't work that way. No. Both characters should get aggro, both the owner of the Correct. fighter and the person initiating the attack. On land, Correct. jump into D Tech G. So be careful. and diet work. So be careful with that, that might be an exploitable kind of offense. Unless something's declared an exploit, it's not an exploit. Not always. A lot of people have got in a lot of trouble and had a lot of stuff taken off them even because okay, they take something. The gate, jump, jump, jump. Yeah, but they didn't get their accounts banned for doing something before it was declared an exploit. The only sure. time, <laughs> like, um, in space. well, um, remember, I, the guy Q kill, um, he anchored a pause in a, um, in route between two. And then a line F90, a line F90. Right, there was uh, three of you there that decloaked before the FC told you where to go, so watch that. Oh, just got tackled by the rats. Well, some of them... is okay. There's a jump bridge in your VK. Pop the rats, guys. Let's pop the rats. It's positive. It, FC, can we go <laughs> running? You can right now. Kill him, kill him. I'm talking anomalies, dog. 
Right. Oh. Expedition over. That would be fun. Wow. Maybe in a couple of years. Or were you all Those using supers or something? <laughs> Those battleships got alphaed. Wow. <laughs> Take fleet warp. Yeah, they melted pretty quick, didn't they? I just targeted one, saw it was like full shield and full health, and then it vanished. <laughs> On land on the F90 gate, go ahead and jump in, and you're going to align to SB5. That's where the gate camp is, guys. Be careful. There's bubbles it's up. It's only five ships. I think we'll be oh, fine. Oh, God. Dude, they won't expect it. Let's fight. Fuck them up. That's fine. Fight! Probably why they're going this way. FC, if there's a gate camp on the other side of this, I'm throwing my bubble up. Uh, jump through, jump through. Had GP gates in SB5. Uh, like... 10 minutes ago. Traffic control. Yay! Alright, align SV5, align SV5. Please let it be a gate camp. Okay, the gate camp has the like a still at war call. There's no there's gate no camp anymore. There's no gate camp anymore. On the low key. There's nothing in SV5 anymore. Okay. I, I and mean, even if it, yep. if it as soon as they saw us jump in, they'd run away. Yeah, that's why I tried to throw up a bubble and stop them from escaping. <laughs> And then you just pray to God that my computer <laughs> manages to keep up with it. Look at Intel Hero. SV5 looked dead. Cat police just is served. <laughs> jump, jump, jump. Gate campers are still in local. We're gonna line to head on the other side. Line head. They're all dead. I like to hear that as long as it's not us. Take the fleet warp. Warp drive. I think he meant because they managed to kill the Loki that was camping this Yeah, Catch oh, Police was coming in. That's why I'm not worried about doing anything with us. They, they have a much better shot of killing anything that fast than we do. Jump in, jump, take the gate, jump, jump. Hey Dusty, where are you guys at right now? Are you coming back to join us? Yeah, uh, we're in HedgeP. Perfect. Can I get you on the jump bridge? We're going to have you go through first in orbit at 30, because I'm pretty sure those bombers are going to be right there waiting for us. Yep, sure. Align jump bridge, guys. Align jump bridge. Alright, take the fleet warp. Guys, do not take the bridge. Do not take the bridge. Dusty, let me know when you guys get in there. Sure. Um, we're going to orbit the jump bridge at 30k. Um, That's perfect. Alright, cool. Yep, just let me know when you are at, at 30. Yeah, I mean, we're here. Uh, we're just spreading out now. Okay guys, tackle wing is gonna give us some okay. protection here. Yep, you're good. Yep, we're in. 
Okay, uh, do not jump. We're going to go by waves now. If your character name begins with A, down to J, A to J, A to J, go ahead and jump. And warp station A to J. Warp jump, warp station. Everybody else hold, A to J. Okay, we're going to give them five seconds to get off. Alright, now if you're K to R, K to R, go ahead and jump through, K to R, go ahead and jump through. And warp yourself in. Station. Now we're going to give them about five seconds to get off. Alright, and the rest of the guys with me, go ahead and jump through. Everybody jump, if you're still in head, jump into GE, warp yourselves to station. Nicely done, I know that's a weird maneuver guys, but it saves us from all dying on the jump bridge, which nobody likes and really hurts at the end of a fleet that has otherwise been very successful. I think it's an excellent tactic. Alright, we're done. Um, that's a pretty dry content fleet, guys. Sorry about that, but it does fulfill a very important objective there. We gotta hang on to 7MD if we're gonna keep taking systems up North Catch, so.